Hi, and welcome back to our channel. Here's Dillis with me. And um, Dillis is wearing her Christmas jumper today. She's also got a bodysuit on underneath because she's recently had um, an operation. She's recovering, recovering well. Um, so well done, Dillis. Um, please um, subscribe to my channel. It would be good. Um, I keep forgetting to ask, so um, I've been told to make sure I ask at the beginning of the um, video. <laughs> so today we're going to talk about auditory integration. Um, as you already know, an auditory processing disorder, sorry. as you already know, if you subscribe to my channel, I believe that all children need a sensory profile. I've included a template in my latest book, which is called Learning Through Play and is published by Routledge and available due out in January. A sensory profile tells us whether a child has a sensory impairment, such as a hearing impairment, um, a visual impairment or a physical impairment. A sensory profile would also tell us whether or not they had a sensory processing issue in these areas, which is obviously different to an impairment. Today, we're going to look at an auditory processing disorder. Our sense of hearing is connected to our brain. Our brain processes what our ears are hearing, but sometimes the connection is a bit faulty. If you consider how wonderful and complicated the making of a human being is, you might say that, is it any wonder that some babies arrive with some fine tuning needed? But of course, we're not aware of that when they're born. Auditory processing disorder is not a hearing impairment, but a sound and language processing issue, a sensory processing disorder. Ears are the gateway, as it were, to the brain. When there is no medical reason to explain a child's auditory sensitivity, it could be that the brain is not processing those sounds well enough. If a child has normal hearing, then the warning signs for an auditory processing disorder could be that they have a speech delay or repeated ear infections, which can be fluid in the middle ear, giving the brain distorted information if you think about it. They may have problems focusing, they may put their hands over their ears, they may cry out in response to um, sounds, they may be um, daydreaming or lacking attention because they've tuned out of those envir environmental noises of causing them concern. Or conversely, they may be so distracted by, that back by the background noises that they can't concentrate and they have behavioral issues. Some people are mistakenly diagnosed with other conditions when all that they have is an auditory processing disorder. They may learn better visually because they can't cope with listening to verbal instructions. A child may hum to themselves to block out the noise of the overhead um, light fittings that you can't hear that noise but they are hypersensitive to that particular vibration of sound. I have a postgraduate degree in the teaching of dyslexia and some students with dyslexia actually have auditory processing disorder. So you would include any of these warning signs that we've talked about on a sensory profile so that you can take that into account as a teacher when you're teaching that student. So as I've said before, a sensory profile is so important when a child enters school. 
because it's telling you about the areas that you could help that child to have a better education. I remember attending a conference a few years ago in London. It was a tribute conference to Dr. Guy Barad, who had died some months before. Um, Dillis is chewing up a book of mine, which is very, very, very frustrating. <laughs> he was a, an accomplished ear, nose, throat specialist who also pioneered auditory integration therapy. He believed that some people were hypersensitive to some frequencies compared to other frequencies. And so sounds that they heard might be magnified or distorted. And he developed auditory integration training with the goal of removing that hypersensitivity. At that conference, I listened to Georgina Stell. She was diagnosed with autism when she was very young and she had severe behavioral problems. The family came upon Dr. Barad, and it was the turning point for Georgina's emergence from autism. Today, she is a successful businesswoman and mother. She told us that when she used to be on the way to school, she could hear the drains in the string of hotels that she had to pass down the road to school. And she could hear the drains of those hotels. Nobody else could hear them, but she could. And she couldn't, because she couldn't communicate at that time, she couldn't let her parents know the reason for her dreadful behavior on the way to school. Because it wasn't that she didn't want to go to school, it was just that she didn't want to go that way to school. She used to have meltdowns if they took her to the seaside. Now, most children love the seaside, but the waves, the noise that they made to her was so huge that it frightened her. So she would have a meltdown. Once she started receiving auditory integration training from Dr. Barad, she started to improve. And she was able to communicate. And as I say, she went on to become a successful businesswoman. Rose, Rosalie Seymour was the first auditory integration trainer and practitioner in South Africa. And she developed filtered sound training, allowing the auditory integration training to be done in the home. So I trained, um, I trained um, with Ro Rosalie. So um, she came over to stay with me here in, in my home. Um, I put her up for the um, Easter holidays, um, one Easter in, in school, and um, I trained and passed, thank goodness, because um, there is an exam and I did pass. And um, so I paid for the training and for, her, um, and, and for all of those kinds of things related to it, but I didn't pay for the system, the computer, um, and the actual package that went with it. Um, the school did so that the school could own that then and I trained staff in, in school then to deliver the um, sound training. Uh, I'll just tell you what the training is. It's, um, it's a method that uses music to retrain listening um, skills by filtering the sound in a specialised way. The student listens to, you can see where the, where the dog is, is um, at these pages on the end, the student listens to the pieces of music that essentially have random sounds missing, which presents the brain with unpredict unpredictable sounds to process, and it exercises the ordinary system. It seems that in these training programs, the mechanisms of the ear receive a passive message, and this has the effect of, the effect of toning up or tuning in the listening mechanism. Filtered sound training is offered in a personalized package of 20 half hour sessions. These sessions are done twice a day consecutively for 10 days. Changes that occur in listening and learning are seen over the period of four months following it. We did have huge success in um, school with filtered sound training. And we, um, we did some evidence-based um, um, reports on, on that success. Um, and I write about that 
in the book. Um, yeah. And it gives you more information about auditory integration and auditory processing disorder. So what would you do then if you felt that your child or yourself may have auditory processing disorder? Well, I would try and see an audiologist to understand sensory processing disorders. And you would allow um, your child or student who was in class and you had these, um, and you thought it, they might have it, you'd allow them to wear ear defenders if they need to concentrate on a task without background um, noise. There are free apps to aid or to treat processing issues, but I'm loathe to recommend any because new ones are added all the time. I just recommend to go on to an app store platform and put in a search for auditory processing and it will show you the latest. Some are free and some cost money. Just try out the free ones that appeal to you and if they don't seem suitable, then look um, at the pay for apps. There's also some other things that you can um, aid auditory processing disorder, apart from auditory integration training. Um, if you Google that, you'll find lots of practitioners in, in your area. Um, filtered sound training, you may find some in your area too. There's something called GEM Learning, just Google that. There's sound therapy, Google these. And there's something called the Listening Project. It depends on the severity of auditory processing disorder, but recording lectures to listen to at your own pace is something that some people who have worked out that they have this um, auditory processing disorder do. Um, I also recommend using Audible or other um, apps that allow you to um, listen to the story um, so that you can play it several times um, because you, you haven't got to um, you know, just concentrate on it for that one period of time but you could play it at your leisure as many times as you want to repeat it as many times as you want. Um, and I also would recommend having subtitles on your videos, which are easy to do now on TV. So it's a visual um, aid to you watching a, um, a video. And of course, you can repeat your videos as many times as you want as well. So I hope that's helped you with um, auditory understanding auditory processing disorder. And we would like to say, before she destroys the blinds as well, because she started to eat those, we would like to say bye-bye. Pippi is asleep on the other chair, so we won't disturb her. So it's bye-bye from us. Oh, please. Please remember to subscribe to our channel. That would be great. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.